But now that you've done that, you should be able to use the bottom left pad to trigger channel one, the second pad to trigger channel two, channel three, channel four, so forth and so on. That's gonna work for your first eight. If you press the bank button, it's gonna turn green and this will work for your second eight, giving you a total of 16 different channels that you can control and trigger from your drum pads on the Keylab Essential Mark III. What's going on guys? This is Al B back with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to get your Keylab Essential Mark III set up with FL Studio. And specifically, I'm gonna focus on how to get your drum pad set up to give you that MPC style or drum machine style workflow where each pad is gonna trigger a different channel in the FL Studio channel rack. Now, this is what I have found to be the best workflow and many others agree. And it's gonna allow you to tap out your drums while you have a melody playing and you're in loop record mode, or it's gonna just allow you to freestyle your drums however you please. And it's gonna give you a lot more of that natural bounce and give you a lot more of a natural feel to your actual drums. Now I'm gonna use the Keylab Mark III 49 key version in this video, but this template will also work for the 61 key version as well. And if you're looking for the Mini Lab 3, I have a separate video for that one and I'll put a link on the screen and in the description to where you can find that one. That's what I'm gonna focus on in this video. I will do a second video that focuses on how to integrate the Keylab with FL Studio in general and how you get it to integrate with the Arturia plugins and also how you get it to integrate with the DAW itself. I'm gonna do that in a separate video and I will put a link on the screen and in the description to where you can check that out once it's ready. But for now, we're gonna focus on the drum pads. Without further ado, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. All right, so the first thing that you want to do to get the keyboard set up as I have described is to go to arteria.com, go to the downloads and manual section and download MIDI Control Center download it and then install it. Once you've done that, you then have to download the Albi template that's going to make the keyboard function as we've talked about. Um, and in order to do that, I'm also gonna put a link in the description where you can navigate directly to the template for download. Um, heads up, it is not free, but it will get you exactly what you need and work exactly as described and you will find it well worth it. So once you've downloaded MIDI Control Center and installed that, once you've downloaded the Albi template, now you're gonna to want to open up MIDI Control Center and you simply come down here to the bottom left, hit import and navigate to where you downloaded the Albi template. Make sure you've already unzipped the template if you haven't yet, unzip it so that you can navigate straight to this file, albfls.keylabessential3. Open that file up and then you should see in the user template section, you should now see it say, L B F L S. Now I might change this at some point and it might be a different version, but you will know um, it should just say L B F L S. Now that you have this, make sure you have user one selected here and you're going to do store two. And what this does is it pushes the L B template onto the keyboard into user program one. Now you should see on your LCD screen that it says LBFLSV2. If it doesn't, just toggle through your programs and make sure that you are actually inside of user mode. Um, and that's where you should see it. Once you see that on the keyboard, now you know that you have pushed the template to the keyboard. It's actually enabled on the keyboard. So that means the keyboard is already running in that function, in the user function using my template. Once you're done with that, you can just close out and once you close out MIDI Control Center, let's go into FL Studio. Once you're inside of FL Studio, go to Options, MIDI Settings, or you can just press F10. Make sure you see the Keylab Essential 49 MK3 MIDI in the input section. Make sure it's enabled, and then make sure the controller type is set to Keylab Essential Mark III. Another thing you wanna be sure is to set the Omni Preview MIDI channel to 11. Just click and drag it and make sure that the Omni Preview MIDI channel is set to 11. Your ports should also be set to 236 here for the input and the same thing on the output, that port should be set to 236 here. Once you have your FL Studio MIDI settings matching the ones you see on the screen, you can close this out and now you can come to your channel rack. 
Now, there is a weird bug with the keyboard where I had issues programming the bottom left two pads to correspond to channel one and two. And so in order to fix that, what you have to do first is go add two blank sampler channels. And then I'm going to just clone that one. Now you can highlight them, hold alt and press the up arrow. Make sure that those are the first two or the top two channels in your channel rack. And I'm just going to go ahead and zip them so that I don't have to keep looking at them. But now that you've done that, you should be able to use the bottom left pad to trigger channel one, the second pad to trigger channel two, channel three, channel four, so forth and so on. That's going to work for your first eight. If you press the bank button, it's going to turn green and this will work for your second eight, giving you a total of 16 different channels that you can control and trigger from your drum pads on the Key Lab Essential Mark III. Now, one thing that throws some people off is that I start with the bottom left, even though that pad is labeled pad five, it's actually controlling channel one. And that's just because that's the layout that I like, the bottom left being my first drum. And that is how I have always seen the NPC set up as well. Um, and just kind of how I've always made these type of templates. So hopefully that's okay for you guys, but I did want to just explain that so you don't get confused trying to press pad one at the top left to trigger channel one, when really you should be using the bottom left pad to trigger channel one, then the second pad from the bottom left to trigger channel two so forth and so on so with that guys yeah you're good and if you want i mean you can add up to 16 additional channels here and you will be able to control all of those from your drum pad and if you don't want to always have to make the two blank sampler channels at the top of the channel rack you can just do it one time and then go and actually save your project as a template um, so that you don't have to keep doing that And I just did that here and you can see it kind of gives you a, a pop up to say the project has been saved as a new template. And now if I go to file new from template, I can see that template that I just created right here, Keylab MK3, and it's going to already have the two blank sampler channels here. They're just zipped right now. So that's how you do that. And now you don't have to create two blank sampler channels every time you want to open up a new project and start using your keyboard. Once you're done tapping out your drums and you want to go back to controlling the doll, you will need to press the program button so that your play and stop and record and all your different transport buttons work properly. You got to make sure to just get back out of the user mode and go back to the, the Arturia or the doll modes to be able to do that. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button if you did. And I'm going to be soon posting the second part of this series where it's going to show you how to get the KeyLab Mark III set up with FL Studio without using my custom template. And this will show you how to set it up so that it integrates with the Arturia plugins as well as with the DAW itself. And you can control different mixer channels and things like that right natively from the keyboard. I'm going to show you that in a second video. And once it's ready, I will put a link on the screen and in the description. So make sure you guys look for that as well. Until next time, guys, this is Al B and we are out. Yes, sir.